that time of the year again. I'm back. My name is Nina and I'm here to share with you my top 10 favorite books of 2021. I'm excited. So I've read hopefully 100 books. I'm at 99 right now in the middle of 100. I've read, I'm going to say I've read 100 books this year. And by gosh, there was some good ones. So I'm here to share with you my top 10 of the 100 that I read. These are in no particular order, and these did not mean that they were released in 2021, just that I read them this year. So I'm going to start with one that I'm really excited about because I think I may have found a new favorite author. I don't usually pick books by authors because I don't really pay attention about who wrote it. Um, I just look at the covers and I say, ooh, that's interesting. I want to read that. Um, but I read two Karen Slaughter books this year, and they are both of my top 10 favorites of the years. So back in January, I read Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter, which I thought was a much more gruesome book than False Witness, but False Witness was also in my top 10. So False Witness is one of her new releases this year, and I read it this year uh, because I, I liked Pretty Girls so much. So let's talk about Pretty Girls. This is a thriller. It deals with rape, so if you're sensitive to that subject, I would highly not recommend this book because it is very gruesome and, and detail-oriented with that um, as the main element. So it deals with uh, two sisters uncovering a secret about um, a man that they know and uh, their third long-lost sister and what actually happened to her. Um, this was crazy. I, I was so invested in this book. It was such a page turner for me. And Goodreads said this was my longest book that I've read this year. Um, my copy is only less than 400 pages. Goodreads said it was like 688. So take with that what you will. But this was like a five star read for me. False Witness also deals with the subject of brutally raping women. So I do not recommend it if you are sensitive to those uh, types of topics. Um, it deals with a piece of shit man and a woman from his past who now has to um, defend him in court, even though she knows that he's guilty and um, what his father has done in the past and whatnot. I am not good at giving synopsis. Just read the damn book. It's amazing. Okay, okay. Let's let's pick a graphic novel. I have three graphic novels here with me today and one nonfiction. So this is got oh, a two nonfiction. So this is going to be exciting. So one of the first graphic novels I have here for you today is called Display Display Displacement by Kiki Hughes. Um, look, at, I mean, look at that cover. I didn't know what this was about, but I just really liked the cover. Uh, the artwork in this was absolutely amazing. So this book took a really interesting um, topic and, and, and made it more interesting. Um, so this deals with um, the Japanese internment camps in America um, that happened in the 1940s. Is, is my timing right? I think so. Um, but it deals with the Japanese internment camps. And this young girl is kind of, is getting time traveled back in time and experiencing what her grandma went through as a Japanese American um, during that time. And it was mind blowing. Um, I don't feel like we talk enough about that. I feel like that kind of gets brushed over during a lot of history classes. I know I didn't learn that in school. Um, so I, I was interested in learning more about it um, through this book. Why does it look like I've been crying? I'm just so excited. I'm just going to tears, apparently. Um, let's move on to another person that I didn't... Okay, I'm just... I'm blown away by this book. And it is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now, Taylor Jenkins Reid has been a very popular author the past few years, but this is the first novel I've uh, read by her. And uh, she... Uh, my library has her other two books, Daisy Jones and the Six, and... Uh, Evelyn Hugo's Seven Husbands of something. Anyway, um, I knew this was going to be like one of the best books of 2021, um, according to other people. And I really wanted to jump on the bandwagon, even though I had zero interest in reading this. I was like, I'm not going to like this book, but I really just want to give her a try. And so I ended up reading it on ebook and then my library was able to get it in a hard copy. 
I read it on ebook and I don't read ebooks. So I was like, oh, this is going to be horrible. I hate the format I'm reading it in and I'm not going to like this story at all. I didn't know what it was about. I just knew like I wasn't interested in the types of writing that she does. Um, boy, was I wrong. Was I in for a surprise? I devoured this book. Like every second of every day, I was just like, what's happening? Like, I loved this. Um, I finished it in like two days or something. I don't know. But I had like work. If I didn't have work, I would have just sat there and read this entire thing in one sitting. Um, it deals with siblings and uh, their family dynamic and relationship. And that sounds like a boring plot, but it was not. Um, this is taken back, uh, taken place back in the 80s. Um, but it also deals with like their parents and the flashback from their parents from like the 50s. Um, but it deals with their sibling dynamic and uh, growing up and their relationship building. Uh, so characters are a huge main part of this plot. Um, and I just, I really enjoyed this book. I ranted to my boyfriend about it the entire time. He thought there was too much backstory and he was not interested in this type of book. Um, but I loved it so much. So now I'm excited to read some of her other books. Um, because I know my library has them. So hoping in 2022, I get there. Moving on, we have The Handmaid's Tale, specifically the graphic novel. I also read the novel this year. I read the graphic novel first, and then uh, back in September, I read the actual novel. But I just preferred this so much more. I thought the art was just incredible. I found it very um, enticing, and I felt more... Uh, connected with the graphic novel than I was with the novel. The novel was good, but I don't feel like it added anything to the graphic novel. So I feel like it was kind of a waste of my time to read the, the novel after I read the graphic novel. I'm, I very much preferred this um, and it gave me everything that I was looking for. I didn't really leave out um, any huge parts of the book that I thought were very important. So I loved this. Um, and yeah, here is the nonfiction that I have, one of the nonfictions, um, called Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs by Caitlin Doherty. Um, it's a very cute question and answer book um, about death. So Caitlin is a mortician, a funeral director, and she had kids submit all their questions to her, and she answers them in depth about, you know, what types of different stuff happens to your body after you die. Um, I thought the title was cute. I thought the cover was cute. I thought the answers were funny and very informative, and I really enjoyed this. It was very interesting to learn some new facts. This is going to be my library's book club book next month. I'm not part of their book club, though, because they're all old women way older than me, um, and they usually don't pick good books, but this book, I hope they love it because I was obsessed with this. First off, look at this cover. It's absolutely stunning. It's a historical fiction with some fantasy elements to it. Um, and again, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of historical fiction, so I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this book, but I loved this cover. It was a relatively short book, and my voice is cracking, sorry. It was a relatively short book, but it was fantastic and phenomenal. Phenomenal. I wanted to say both those words at the same time. Sorry about that. Um... I was just blown away. Um, it deals with present, it goes back and forth between different perspectives. It deals with present day, uh, a, a young woman finding herself after her marriage goes through the shitter um, and uncovering and researching about this lost apothecary. And then it gives us the lost apothecary uh, and her perspective. And she is a woman who helps other women uh, pretty much kill their husbands or other males in their life. Um, and so it was, it was a beautiful story. It was just amazing. And I, I just, amazing. 10 out of 10 out of 10. Moving on, we have Girl Serpent Thorn. This is one of the very few YAs I've read this year. Um, actually, some of these graphic novels on this list are YA books, but um, I, I, this is the first year I've read more adult fiction than young adult fiction, which is crazy to me. But here is one of the young adult fictions that I read and I really enjoyed. Look at that cover, Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Barsha. I don't know how you say that last name. Um, anyway, this is a young adult fantasy novel about a, a, a young girl who is cursed and, um, you know, she feels like she's a demon and an outcast and she wants to break this curse so bad so that she can finally touch people and love people and have relationships and not be hidden away from the world. 
the last one on my list, but not the last one I'm going to mention is my other nonfiction, but also my other graphic novel. This is a graphic novel memoir called Almost American Girl by Robin Haw. Um, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this, but once I started it, I, I opened it and I was like, oh, that's a lot of like very wordy for a graphic novel. I don't really know if I want to read this. I'm really glad I did. It was a five out of star, a five out of five stars. It was uh, amazing. My Goodreads might not say five out of five. I very rarely give books five out of five on, on Goodreads because I always think there can be like little tweaks here and there. Um, but anyway, this deals with a young girl, uh, who is Korean and her mom ups and moves her out of nowhere to America and she has to adjust to the American lifestyle and learn English and make new friendships and deal with the relationship that she has with her mom um and the criticism there um this was heartbreaking lovely um heart grasping and just I just I had a lot of feelings during this book. So yes, that is my top 10. But I also feel like I have to give an honorable mention to um, Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. If you don't know what this book is, where have you been? Ice Planet Barbarians is a smut novel um, that blew up this year when it became an Amazon bestseller. Um, and people started buying it ironically. Um, but the, it, it blew up. It became some people's favorite. And um, uh, the, the Barnes & Noble uh, released this newer cover, which I think is beautiful. But I also think is very deceiving because this looks like a young adult fantasy novel. And it is very much not that. Um, <laughs> I thought this was hilarious. I didn't know what to expect. I was I really wanted this book because I wanted to read more smut. Um, but also I just wanted to kind of make fun of bad writing and I feel like a lot of smut novels have bad writing or bad characters. This was not groundbreaking writing, but it was hilarious writing. This is like if I wrote a book, this is kind of how I picture myself writing like nothing phenomenal and like poetic, but hilarious and a really fun, fast, enjoyable read. This deals with uh, women who get abducted by aliens and they crash land into this ice type of planet and she runs into this ice barbarian and he resonates with her and believes her to be his soulmate and then there's alien sex I mean like what more could you want right <laughs> right my my friend from work got me uh this for Christmas along with some beautiful stickers um and it, it just made my day so that is all I have to share with you. I would love to know what your thoughts on these books were. Please leave me a comment. Um, or if you hated these books, uh, what were your books of 2021 and all of that jazz. I hope you have a wonderful day and go read some more books. Bye.